Hey guys, it's Robin, and welcome to the Science of Self-Care. Today I'm going to be talking about fasted exercise. Fasted exercise is literally just exercising in a fasted state, meaning that you haven't eaten beforehand. Now this doesn't mean that you have to actively be fasting to practice fasted exercise, because we all naturally fast when we sleep. Our overnight fasts can easily last 10 to 12 hours, depending on when we take our last bite in the evening, to our first bite of breakfast the next morning. Those practicing intermittent fasting prolong this period often by skipping breakfast, but even for those of us who are eating breakfast in the early morning, we'll still have undergone our longest fasting period overnight. Interestingly, this fasting period puts our body in a different hormonal state than when we've recently been fed. Our physiology changes in many complex ways before and after meals, and these are definitely things I would love to touch upon in future videos. But I really wanted to start with some biochemical fundamentals today and just talk about how generally our fasted state can be used to our advantage when exercising for optimal health. And I say optimal health, you distinguish between exercising for general well-being and exercising for performance. This video is not about exercising for performance as competitive athletes might. This is really just about optimizing your body in the everyday and this is something that everyone can practice. Even people who don't consider themselves fitness buffs can still really benefit from the practice of fasted exercise and I'll talk about why right now. So to backtrack, insulin is a hormone secreted by our pancreas that tells our body to store the food we've just eaten for later use. This is important because insulin really puts our body into an energy storage mode. But if we haven't eaten in a while, our body goes from this energy storage mode predominated by insulin to an energy usage mode because we're not actively feeding it. So in a fasted state, our insulin levels are much lower than when we've recently eaten. Hormonally, this means that we are set up to burn glycogen and fat for fuel. Now, glycogen is just our body's way of storing sugars in our liver and our muscle. What fasted exercise does is it increases our energy needs while in this energy usage state. Um, and that means that we'll be using our own fat sources and our own glycogen sources to fuel our workout. This is ideal because it trains our body to be really good at using our own fuel sources and this helps to maintain our blood sugar levels and supplies us energy throughout the day. Eating before workout will shift your body from a energy usage state to an energy storage state and it's going to take the energy from our food and instead of storing it, it's going to use it towards our workouts. That will actually inhibit our own body's use of fat and glycogen for fuel. This is not as desirable because it's really healthy for our body to be efficient at using our own energy stores. Bodies that are better adapted to fat oxidation and using glycogen for energy are less dependent on food consumption to fuel our energy throughout the day, which means we'll feel good throughout the day, our blood sugar levels will remain stable throughout the day. If you'd like a bit more information on why that's so important, please do check out my glycemic impact video. There are many citations linked to that video talking about the importance of maintaining your blood sugar for overall health. So with this knowledge, the best time for most of us to practice fasted exercise is before breakfast. It's really as simple as moving your body and it doesn't have to be an intense gym workout. It can be, but it can also just be walking your dog around the block. It can be taking a 10 minute jog, doing some yoga or stretches, just upping your energy use uh, in this fasted state is so good to train your body to use its own fuel sources. This is gonna be something that has compounding effects for our blood sugar maintenance and for our overall health and well-being. With that said, I hope this short video was useful to you. Uh, as always, citations are listed below and please do leave any comments of other video topics you would like me to cover. I'm really excited to continue to delve into all things self-care and the science behind it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.